The Aadhaar project of the UIDAI aims to give a unique identification number to all residents in India. The government claims that with a unique identity, individuals will have a portable identity anywhere in India and will be able to access various benefits and services. Now, a project of this nature involves huge costs. There are the costs of enrolling individuals, of obtaining their biometric information, uh, using the best technology, creating a huge database of all this information, creating applications to connect into this database, linking uh, the Aadhaar project with various other government schemes, and so on. Now, the costs of Aadhaar have been widely debated and discussed. But expenditure of this nature of the government has to be justified. Hence, the a research team at the National Institute of Public Finance and Policy undertook a cost-benefit analysis of Aadhaar and found that there are substantial gains to the government from investing in this project. In fact, taking into account all costs and making somewhat modest assumptions about the benefits, it was found that the internal rate of return of this project was over 50%. In the following slideshow, uh, we discuss the study and run you through the spreadsheet which has all the calculations and assumptions. This is an overview of the cost-benefit analysis of Aadhaar conducted by the National Institute of Public Finance and Policy. The question we are asking in this study is, what is the internal rate of return generated by the Aadhaar project to the government? Which basically means, what is the return in real terms the government gets on investing in the Aadhaar project over time? The time period we are considering is 11 years, starting from 2010-11 to 2020-21. Around 10 years is typical in such studies, because beyond this period, it becomes difficult to forecast either the costs or the benefits. The benefits from Aadhaar can be classified into two types, intangible and tangible. Thinking about the intangible benefits, Aadhaar can improve labor mobility by providing migrants with a portable identity and thus making their migration experience easier. Further, there can be demand-side empowerment. Across schemes, Aadhaar gives an identity to beneficiaries who can accurately claim their entitlement and thereby apply pressure on the scheme to improve the efficiency of delivery. Accurately identifying individuals and authenticating them can also improve the supply management of the scheme. In addition, Aadhaar can help improve access to financial services and thereby serve the goals of financial inclusion. However, these benefits being intangible are hard to quantify. Therefore, we focus on the tangible benefits of Aadhaar for our study. In terms of tangible benefits, there can be benefits to the economy as a whole and to the government. We consider only the costs and benefits of Aadhaar to the government. A more comprehensive cost-benefit analysis of Aadhaar, including all benefits to society, some of which we have highlighted, may lead to higher returns. When it comes to intangible benefits to the government, there are many programs and schemes that can directly benefit um, through integration with Aadhaar. These include the public distribution system, the Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme, housing, health and education schemes, fertilizer and LPG programs. In many of these schemes, there are leakages in the delivery or the transfer of benefit arising due to identification and authentication errors. That is basically due to the existence of fake and duplicate beneficiaries. These are the main leakages that Aadhaar can plug in a scheme. And in our study, we focus on this quantifiable benefit of Aadhaar. As I mentioned, the benefits of Aadhaar come from reduction in leakages due to fake beneficiaries and duplicates. A reduction in leakages is assumed to be a benefit to the government since the funds can be saved and either made to reach the correct beneficiaries 
or can be used productively elsewhere. We estimate the benefits of integration with Aadhaar with the various schemes. There is some literature which points to leakages in government schemes, mainly the public distribution system and the Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme. We use these as benchmark estimates of leakages. However, these reports and audits may also be dated, so we adjust the estimates downwards by 25%. For other schemes where there are partial or no estimates, we make assumptions based on the benchmark schemes that we have considered. Also, in accordance with what is happening, another assumption we make is that integration takes place with a reasonable time lag vis-à-vis -vis Aadhaar enrollment. The costs of Aadhaar are of basically two types. First, there are the costs of developing and maintaining the Aadhaar platform. These include the cost of enrolling the population, setting up the database of Aadhaar, application development to connect to this database, authentication infrastructure at the back end, and so on. These costs are obtained from the budget of UIDAI for the period 2010-11 to 2016-17. From 2017 onwards, we assume steady state costs. The other costs are those of integrating Aadhaar with the government schemes and programs, which we estimate. For example, for the public distribution system to be integrated with Aadhaar, POS terminals have to be set up in fair price shops. Then there is the cost of training and supporting the staff in the use of the biometric terminals, connectivity costs, cost of integrating the Aadhaar database with the PDS database, and so on. For schemes that involve payments through the bank account, such as the MNREGS, there are costs of incentivizing the banking channel. We include all these costs in the analysis. We now look at examples of schemes that we have included in the analysis uh, using the benchmark estimates that we have found. Uh, we also extend the analysis to other schemes. First, let us consider the public distribution system. The PDS is used for distribution of food grains and kerosene to households. A report of the Planning Commission found substantial leakages in this scheme due to fake beneficiaries. Now, these are precisely the kind of leakages that Aadhaar can plug through improved authentication. An elimination of this leakage is the benefit that we measure. The Employment Guarantee Scheme is a work guarantee program for which wage payments are made to workers. Here, there can be leakages at two levels at the workplace due to inflated muster rolls and during disbursement of wage payments. There are social audits that find leakages at both levels. At this stage, though, it should be pointed out that since many of these audits were conducted, wage disbursements have been taking place through bank accounts. Hence, there must be improvements in the efficiency of this scheme, and leakages may be lower than what was found earlier. We account for this in the analysis. That said, Aadhaar integration uh, will still provide benefits because there will be reduced leakages from muster automation and Aadhaar-enabled bank accounts. Now, based on these two schemes, we make assumptions on leakages in some of the other government programs. In education schemes, payments are made for teachers' salaries, books, uniforms, and meals. Reports suggest inflated enrollment in schools and teacher absenteeism, as well as leakages in the delivery of food grains for the midday meals. Benefits are being basically claimed by fakes and duplicates. Aadhaar authentication can improve delivery and plug leakages in these schemes. The government subsidies for fertilizers are given to the manufacturers and importers. But in this scheme, there is potential for diversion to non-agricultural uses, which is a misuse of the subsidy. Aadhaar can improve identification of beneficiaries and support a system where the subsidy can be directly transferred to the intended beneficiaries. Subsidies for LPG are meant for cylinders used in households only.
but reports indicate that there is diversion to commercial use. Aadhaar authentication can minimize such diversion. Further, the government can place a cap on the number of cylinders per household and Aadhaar can be used for authentication to prevent fake and duplicates. The Indra Avas Yojana provides assistance to certain categories of households for the construction of houses in rural areas. While overall this scheme is said to be efficient, there are leakages due to fake beneficiaries and duplicates. Since the payment for this scheme is made through bank accounts, Aadhaar enabled accounts can plug these leakages. Some of the other schemes we have considered are scholarships, pensions, Janani Suraksha Yojana, and payments to Asha workers, payments to Anganwadi workers. In most of these schemes, since payments are made through bank accounts, uh, the benefit can be realized through payments made through Aadhaar enabled bank accounts. This table summarizes the findings of the cost-benefit analysis. The first row shows the total costs of setting up and integrating Aadhaar. In the second row are the benefits of linking Aadhaar with the various government schemes year by year. Naturally, in the first few years, the costs are higher than the benefits, basically because the costs are front-loaded, there are the costs of setting up and integrating Aadhaar with the various schemes the benefits start accruing a little later. Now the rate at which the net benefit becomes positive depends on the rate of integration of Aadhaar with the government schemes. Over the life cycle of the project, the internal rate of, the, uh, Aadhaar pro internal rate of return of the Aadhaar project in real terms is calculated. Summarizing, based on our assumptions, the rate of return in real terms to the government of investing in the Aadhaar project is 52.85%. Let us now take a look at the spreadsheet which gives the detailed assumptions and calculations of the cost-benefit analysis. Here is an overview of the spreadsheet. The first sheet here shows the key assumptions of the cost-benefit analysis. It includes all the government schemes and programs that we have considered in the analysis and estimates of the leakages in the various schemes. This sheet offers flexibility to researchers and policy analysts who would like to try different scenarios to study. For example, if a researcher believes that the fertilizer subsidy should not be included in the analysis, then they can exclude it by clicking on No and the mm, outcome changes. Similarly, based on beliefs, or based on reports and studies that become available eventually, if the numbers on leakages need to be changed, they can be done so to make the report more current. This sheet on assumptions gives the details of the assumptions for costs and benefits of Aadhaar and cites the sources as well for the, for the numbers that we have obtained. Um, as you can see, the the various schemes are listed vertically and for the time period of the project that we have considered. The sheet on costs gives a comprehensive view of the costs of Aadhaar, of setting up and integrating them with various schemes. The sheet on benefits gives an overview of the benefits of integrating with the various schemes. These two working sheets uh, give us some details on the numbers for the PDS and other schemes considered. Finally, the sheet that says summary consists of the total costs of Aadhaar, the total benefits of Aadhaar, and calculates the internal rate of return of the Aadhaar project. The spreadsheet and the paper are available on our website. <laughs>